This is the Idavox Report. It is noble to seek the office of overseer. However, he who does should be above reproach, sober-minded, not quarrelsome, only married once, and not a great lover of money. And will you take a flower for peace? (laughs) We're going to have so much fun when that movie comes out. Damn it, when it comes out, we're going to have a ball. Oh, I've been having fun looking forward to it. I've been having fun making it. I don't know how you weren't afraid of immediately getting pelted by like shoes or tomatoes or, or whatever that was. That took a lot of guts, Rod. That took a lot of guts. That that kind of happened. And that actually, that's how everything snowballed into lawsuit. And I, I, I'll let you intro the show first, though. Yes, yeah, so let, us, let us begin there so everybody knows what... To- who the hell we are and what the hell we're talking about. We, my name is we. Yeah, now everybody's going to come up with all kinds of fat jokes. My name is Daryl Lamont Jenkins. I am the executive director, my founder of One People's Project. Right over here is Brian Powers. Right over there is Christian Perez. And just below me is a gentleman that we have seen um, in recent um, in recent episodes. Um, the producer of 2020, The Dumpster Fire, Rod Weber, and he is going to be, and rather the dumpster fire will be um, seen for everybody to enjoy on Apple TV starting December 1st, and you'll be able to see it in theaters, I believe, on December 7th, correct? Uh, the, the December 1st has been pushed back to the 15th, but it'll be in theaters on oh, the 7th. Okay. There's, yep, there's uh, you listen, man, there, there is some issues over some swear words uh, that were used in the trailer. What's and- wrong with swear words? I mean, I'm all for swear words, uh, but uh, in, in particular, uh, I, I guess uh, in trailers, they don't want them to be there because potentially kids are seeing them. And then it I, it was the kind of thing where I, I came back and said, I gave you a clean trailer. It, it's got it all bleeped out. And they said, no, contextually, there's a problem. There's there's a segment in the trailer in which Vermin Supreme gets a crowd of pro Trumpers to chant suck Trump's cock. And. Uh, because of what it was, even though the word cock was bleeped out, they're like, no, like, like this has got to go. And so it, it, it was just this back and forth with these studio heads, these executives <laughs> that didn't know how to deal with it. And I'm like, guys, like, I, I don't know what the big deal is. We, we can bleep suck. We can bleep cock. What, what more do you want to bleep? Well, you know, and it, at that point, it, you know, it, it started to kind of lose even what the meaning was. So, I, you know. I, I conceded if it was going to be on, if we're making this marriage uh, with corporate America in order to get our message out to more people, uh, then fine. I guess it has to be taken out. And uh, and I agreed to that. Uh, the original trailer still lives on Twitter and YouTube. They can't and on this show. They can't. They can't take that away from us. Uh, and on but, this show because we actually showed it at the end of this program, um, and. Uh, I, I am just very looking forward to it. Although I did say at the end of this that it was going to be um, on Apple TV on December first. Now it's moving up to December fifteenth, just in time for Christmas, the perfect yeah. Christmas present. And I'm one of the um, producers on this thing. That and, is true, and, uh, and I'm in it as a matter of fact. Um, yep. And here's my lovely uh, w- w- wife, Lauren, has uh, come back to join us. Sorry. Uh, I she, was- She's dealing with a lot of stuff uh, with uh, our lawyer because we're right on the precipice of a grand jury tomorrow. Yes. Um, Could you explain? We're not invited. (laughs) You're not invited? Yeah, we're not invited. You don't usually get invited when you're a target. Yep. That's how it works. It's a secret uh, investigation. Uh, But... (laughs) So, so, so this is the weird thing. We're going to get tongue-tied right about now. Um, and we're usually, we're usually not tongue-tied people, but uh, we're we're kind of stepping around some landmines here. And uh, I know that you were just dealing with a lawyer. I don't know if there's anything you could say. 
Um, well, I just finished eating a delicious ham sandwich, uh, as everybody knows, are the favorite food of grand juries everywhere. Um, I happen to be a capicola with a fine, um, uh, like, you Swiss, know. Swiss cheese or some bullshit and uh, parsley on no, the edges? No, provolone. Oh. What's wrong oh. with you? Yeah, well, I'm... Also, I prefer horseradish on my ham sandwiches. Um, so I can really only answer questions regarding ham sandwiches when it comes to my case. And the secret indictment that is being uh, written up against me. However, um, what what they have been doing to us for the past year, to our friends, to our comrades, to our colleagues, is a far greater crime than what <laughs> I'm being accused of in terms of harm on the public and harm on people who are actually peace activists and good people. So just, you know, let it be known, uh, whatever team you decided to root for in the election, uh, justice, the DOJ doesn't care about justice. That's all I have to say. They do not give a fuck. And this is the thing uh, that we, uh, we do have to concern ourselves a little bit as, as activists, as filmmakers, as journalists, or whatever you want to call yourself. Um, that uh, the the repercussions of uh, you know applauding that Steve Bannon's got a grand jury that affects people like Lauren and I. Well, I wish they were nice as nice to me as they were to Steve Bannon. <laughs> yeah. You know, as soon as this indictment hits, they're going to be knocking on our door with guns. We know okay. people who got raided at gunpoint with six kids in their own house for white collar shit for bad paperwork. We know this, and it's the same investigators that have done that. That are going after us. Well, and to be fair, they, they are they are they're, they don't are they're not a pale complexion. They're uh, this is a BLM activist. That yes, are, they're going after them for white collar shit. Just to be clear, on but they stuff. are still raiding their house full of children at gunpoint. So yeah, we're scared. <laughs> and we are being really vague. And I'm so sorry about that. No, 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 no. You have to be vague, and we completely yeah. understand that. So don't don't be concerned about that. I mean, it's just it's. As my dad would say, it bees like that sometimes. Indeed. I, so do, do we, we need to talk about things that you can talk about? So should should we give some uh, backstory or context uh, for, for the audience here? Because I feel like we just jumped in the middle of it. And <laughs> Sorry. For, for folks that haven't been following along with us, uh, that might be problematic. Um, yeah, by all means, do that. By all please means. do. Um. So uh, I'm Rod Weber, and this is my wife and uh, co-producer, uh, Lauren Pespiza. Uh, we made the film 2020 The Dumpster Fire, uh, which by and large is about the 2020 election, uh, especially the, the primaries for the first half. And when COVID hits, uh, I uh, go straight out to the, uh, the George Floyd protests, uh, where, where there's the fires in Minneapolis, uh, covering the, the protests of the CHOP slash CHAZ, uh, in Seattle, I was out in Portland uh, for a while, uh, going to the protests in uh, New York, the protests in D.C., the, the protests everywhere. Second half of the movie is when shit hits the fan. Um, uh, Daryl is actually um, uh, in, in, in the first scene uh, of the second half of the movie, which kicks off the, the protest segment, if you will. Um, the film also covers uh, throughout it my lawsuit against Donald Trump. Uh, which was precipitated by events in 2016, which you saw at the front of the uh, the, the segment here. That was uh, me doing the scripture with Trump. Um, so uh, I, I guess that's a good starting place as to how my 2020 came to be. Um, and that's why I asked you to play that clip in particular. It might be hard for people to recognize me. I was the guy with the big beard in that clip. Um, my, my, my wife is not fond of that beard or uh, any kind of... Uh, it gets smaller as 2020, the love story, the backstory developed. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you, the sequel to 2020 has been pretty interesting, i got to say. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah. A little it too was great seeing you in yeah. Boston. It yeah, was great but, seeing you in Boston a couple of weeks ago to hang out with the... Uh, but the neo-fascist hate group known as Super Happy Fun America. Oh um, my God. Yes, you have heard that correctly. Folks who have never heard of that group before, trust me. Um, it's kind of like the Joker uh, um, when it comes to calling a, calling a murderous villain the Joker. Uh, yeah, that's what Super Happy Fun America is, except for the fact that they are really dangerous. I mean, well, it, it, 
Yeah. And, and to be fair, I uh, super happy and uh, set the the backdrop of what uh, a, a lot of what I was doing in uh, the 2020 film. Uh, they're not showed too much, uh, but we do drop a, a couple of super happy bombs uh, throughout the movie. Uh, just like, the, you know, the, the lawsuit, uh, which, again, comes from that clip there. I say it's first Timothy three, uh, one to seven. It's noble to see the office of overseer, but who, who does should be above reproach, sober minded, not quarrelsome, uh, not a lover of money and married only once. Um, yeah. And so uh, all the, the Trumpers, uh, they boo they boo me, and simultaneously they're booing the Bible. Trump doesn't really know how to handle it. And um, as you guys were suggesting, I didn't get pelted with t- tomatoes and, um, and cabbages, uh, but I did get pelted by their fists. And- you also got shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah, that definitely, that, that is what, the reason that I wanted you to play that clip is because that is the event, that is the moment that led to the lawsuit, and that's how uh, the the law the complaint uh, is is written in the, in the lawsuit. And so, um, do you have the date on that? Do you remember what day that particular? Uh, that was oct- oct- so October. Uh, no, uh, so 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 the 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 twenty sixteen was... though, correct? No, no, it was twenty fifteen. Uh, so uh, it was a seven. Twenty fifteen, yes. So the so the so the Bible event was uh, September uh, of 2015 in Rochester, New Hampshire. Uh, the following event, which really ramped things up, was in October 12th of uh, 2015. Basically, uh, it, it was it was a week later. Uh, I went to this other event, which was a multi-candidate event. And so you have to understand at this point, Trump was not a thing. He was not a phenomenon. Um, he was at a multi-candidate event where they gave him. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes of speaking time. Um, I went and camped out, got a front row seat and made sure uh, that I, when the Q&A came, I'd be able to call him out. And so um, it, uh, a couple other people, uh, uh, you know, were trying to get in there. Uh, but basically, as he went to Q&A, uh, they were having uh, problems with the microphones throughout. And uh, there was there was some noise and there was some, some commotion. And I said, Screw it. Let's uh, let's not worry about uh, being on the ma- microphone proper. I just stood up and hey, sorry. Okay, and uh, uh, raised my hand and said, uh, uh, "Mr. Trump, I was assaulted at your uh, rally in Rochester. Um, uh, can you speak to that?" And right as he's uh, responding, they they like they plug in the PA system. There's a bunch of noise in the room. I couldn't hear exactly what he was saying, and but. And in the playback afterwards, I saw that he said, you look healthy to me. <laughs> that was it. That was his response. Um, so I was just I was a little bit confused that people were acting as as if something had happened. But something had they t- this FB, the former FBI guy taps me on the shoulder, says, hey, if you want to get your question and you got to go to the back of the room, uh, go down that way and uh, you'll find the microphone there. Go to the back of the room. I, you know, I kind of suspect that it's a ruse. Uh, but being a journalist, I follow through with the ruse in order to uh, see what happens. Got my GoPro on me and you get to the back. There's no microphone. I turn around. There's a wall of Trumpers and they're telling me how to go. Uh, I mean, and I don't mean just like uh, MAGA heads. I mean, like official um, the people from the campaign uh, with with the badge. And, all that. <laughs> and um, long story short, um, uh, they get in my face. They make a number of threats to me. Uh, you know, you want to know my name? Uh, you know, I'm going to put uh, your name all, all over your face. Uh, you know, this this kind of... I mean, they, you're talking like mafiosos. You're going to put honestly. my face all over your name. Well, absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, they wave to some uh, police officers or... And, and so that's a vague thing or what I thought were police officers. There were actually technically off-duty police officers in uniform. So they weren't... So this is the thing. They were imbued with the uh, the official powers of the state, uh, but not uh, responsible for any of their actions because they weren't on duty. They were hired. So that means, so that means they were kind of like, in a, in a sense, even though they were actually cops, technically they were impersonating police officers because they weren't on duty. Right. But so the great thing about that, though, is that it opened uh, the case up to the, uh, the KKK Act of uh, 1871, Interesting. Um, in, Interesting. In, in which um, uh, it, you can in, invoke color of law, which means that um, 
uh, uh, communications uh, between uh, safe catchers or police or whatever they may be can communicate uh, through just a wink, a nod, a look of the face. Um, and so once I was able to establish custom policy and practice, uh, then I was able to establish that when they were making motions like this, which was were shown in video, uh, that they were actually acting in conjunction with each other. And so uh, that was the, the basis of the lawsuit, uh, which kind of set the tone for my 2020, um, uh, which is the film. Now I've said a lot, uh, you know, I feel like someone else should talk now because I and I because I could go on. Well, like Christian, this. Uh, Brian, Christian, do y'all have anything y'all want to add? Yeah, I mean, I guess I I I I'd really love to hear how you met and how you've developed a relationship with Vermin Supreme because he's he's an interesting character and he's pre, he's a pretty big deal on, on on the political satirical left or whatever the hell we're involved in over here. Um, yeah, just, how did just, that how did that get started, man? It, he's just from the neighborhood. He's actually his dad. Like <laughs> in fact actually Rod is Vermin Supreme who traveled back in time to kill baby Hitler. Um Lady is, Hitler. So there, was, so there was There's a New lead. Hampshire. There's no neighborhood in New Hampshire. You live in the middle of the fucking woods. Yeah. <laughs> Vermin's just this guy. Vermin, Vermin is not from New Hampshire. That's a common misconception. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and even people say that I'm from New Hampshire. And we're not. They're from the uh, internet. We are, we're, I well, back to my original question then. How'd you guys meet? And what hood are you uh, talking we're, about? Uh, we're all from the Boston area. Um, including Vermin Supreme. Uh, well, we yeah, we met. Uh, both, there's kind of a circuit for the Boston people up to Manchester, and so it's like an uh, hour away. Uh, Manchester is where the New New Hampshire primaries really happens. Um, Joe and, Biden's up there, like and today. And part of the lawsuit was that I sued the Manchester police. These, these were the people that were involved. And um, you, you hold, up of, minute, hold up for a minute. We got some background noise that just sound like really gross. <laughs> yeah, who's, who's got the motorcycle? In there? That was uh, that was in the background. The mo oh, that's my dog man. running around. Yeah, sorry. But I just heard, it wasn't um, but, it sound like motorcycles. It that was a motorcycle like going up the block. Yeah. But so <laughs> the, the New Hampshire primaries uh, become actually kind of a very small world uh, because it, it almost uh, takes entirely in Manchester and Concord. Concord is is uh, where the state house is. Mm -hmm. And uh, a bunch of things happen with Secretary of State Bill Gardner, uh, who is in charge of who you know gets to be on the ballot. And um, you know, uh, Vermin's always there. I'm always there. And and there's just a core group of people that you see just by going to the New Hampshire primaries. And uh, we couldn't help but be friends. With he's got a boot on his head, and at the time I was uh, doing my shtick, handing out flowers. Uh, you know, to, to make friends with the candidates and uh, reading scripture to them. Um, so. I met Vermin. Sounds like, like the beginning of every love story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Orgy uh, at Vermin's house. Um, I mean, I met him in 2013 at RaffleCon, um, where a lot of my friends were speaking on, like a lot of memes. A lot of my friends are memes. And uh, there was a meme convention at MIT. Might have been 2012. Um, and he actually uh, gave a little blurb for our, my thing about uh, at the time uh, she was called Bradley Manning, but now Chelsea Manning, um, because I was there with people supporting uh, Chelsea Manning. And uh, it's really cute. There's a picture of me and Vermin like from like 12 years ago. Have yeah, I known Vermin longer than yeah, first time uh, I ever met him. Oh, no. First he's time just, I ever he's just him. always around. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard of him for um, I've heard of him years past. I mean, I heard of this Vermin Supreme guy that used to go to the um, um, the conventions like as far back as I would say 94 or but not 94, but like 92 and 96 oh. and all that. I would hear about him. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually meet him until like 2000. I was just right now looking for that video when I actually um, um, videotaped him that was my first meeting of him and it's on twitter somewhere actually right and like everybody documents their first meeting of urban supreme yes you everybody all re you all remember your first time <laughs> yeah exactly yeah absolutely um and uh you know that was the thing is that uh we just kind of uh, uh we obviously hit it off and we we saw each other left and right no matter where we went and ultimately, uh, I ended up directing the 2016 film about Vermin called This Is Vermin Supreme, which in a sense is a sequel to Who Is Vermin Supreme, the 2012 film directed by Steve Onderick. Uh, who's also a longtime friend. Good friend of yeah. ours. Um, and Biff was in that. 
from Back to the Future, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, uh, he uh, called uh, him boy. Boothead. What are you looking at, Boothead? <laughs> uh, no, are, wait, are you talking about Christopher Lloyd from Back no, to the Future? No, Christopher Lloyd, Tom, Tom Wilson, who played Biff. Biff Tannen. No, I, no, I just, no, I understand that. But so Christopher Lloyd is in This Is Vermin Supreme. <laughs> oh, um, oh, wow. And we, we do talk about time travel with him. And the guy who plays Biff was standing right next to him. Right. Yeah, that's too funny. Circle. And, and in fact, Sean Astin from Lord of the Rings, uh, who plays one of the Hobbits, uh, man, he spotted he spotted me and Vermin. Well, he really spotted Vermin, um, but <laughs> uh, with the boot on his head from afar while he uh, he was attending or uh, one of these comic cons. He's like, "Boothead guy, come over here. I want to <laughs> talk to you." And they end up getting in the longest conversation, which is handlers. And all his fans were so upset about because they're waiting in line to get a signature or whatever. And he's like, no, hold on. Like, I got to talk to this guy with a boot on his head about time travel. I, I heard about this guy. Uh, we're getting in a deep conversation. Um, and Vermin actually gave him a, 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 a good schooling about uh, what it meant to be an anarchist. Because Sean Astin's uh, initial reaction was, wait, wait, like Mad Max? Uh, like you're for... Uh, bedlam and you know uh, you know the streets burning and uh vermin got into uh, kropotkin and um mutual aid and, uh, and even talking about so it's like okay so you know mutual aid uh, or uh, so, so uh vermin says that uh, you know like there's a natural state of anarchism uh not only when you're a child but like when there's a hurricane there's there's no uh, government forces around, and so people have to band together in order to help each other. And um, to tie that back into what's going on with Lauren and I, uh, there's been a damn lot of people uh, that are sending in these letters of support, um, you know, to try to keep Lauren out of jail here, um, who yes, uh, have, have brought up that here. that brought up during the pandemic uh, that that was the first thing uh, Lauren got laid off from her job because they went under. And uh, Lauren went directly into mutual aid mode, um, you know, at, uh, you know, out of her own wallet, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, grandma. Well, and- my unemployment was pretty good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe you want to talk about that? I, I don't know. Well, you know, Austin Brighton Mutual Aid uh, for a lot of like local neighborhood mutual aid groups formed at the time. Um, and people were setting up community fridges. I was helping at the local Austin Brighton food pantry. Um, since I wasn't working, it was very easy to go help the old people who usually unload the truck, unload the truck with my big, strong arms and, you know, uh, pick up medications for elderly neighbors who are afraid of getting COVID by even just going to the pharmacy. And it was sort of like just this ad hoc system that was created, but there was also group chats about it. And this is how, you know, I guess, I, I guess this is what doing an anarchy actually is, right? <laughs> I was thinking, there, you know, one of my friend's mothers was 80 and her husband was in the nursing home for a surgery. He ended up dying of COVID, unfortunately, but I was, you know, the, the house was a mess, kind of a hoarder situation, but it was like, I did not want her to trip and fall. So I was going over all the time with my friends and helping clean up so that this 80 year old woman wouldn't fall. Also, she wanted to go take a walk to CVS. Okay. Wear your mask. You know, I'll go in the store for you. That kind of thing. I I had very close relationships with many people during my initial, during the initial uh, pandemic shutdown, like, you know, ground zero situation in Boston um, until the George Floyd stuff started up and then, you know, it's time to get out of the house. Um, but the, you know, there was a lot of things that I was doing, you know, I was also, uh, helping because there are people who are still working, who are passing by, uh, people overdosing. Um, and I had a friend, actually a neighbor who, uh, is a harm reduction person who had tons of Narcan, the thing that reverses a overdose. And we have a huge opiate issue in Boston, and, you know, people were there was no one on the streets except people who were overdosing and no one's calling to help. So I made sure that my friends who worked at City Hall and, you know, were still working, ha- had Narcan, knew how to use it. I did uh, distribute Narcan to people that ended up using it on people. And um, 
And this was not like something I was trying to like actually talk about. <laughs> this was just like normal to yeah, me. This is what you just it, do. You know? Like, yeah, what you know. like this is. I guess this is anarchy because this is. It, is this what anarchy is? I mean, yeah. I always thought anarchy was a Mad Max thing too, but I realized that we need to take care of ourselves. And actually, I do believe in the inherent good in most people. Well, see, that's one of the things. I mean, this. yeah, I had to learn. I had to learn about anarchism through um, actually a. Um, a DVD, actually a PBS broadcast on <laughs> anarchi anarchism in America. And um, it goes back to 1980s and it just ran down all the facets of anarchism. I mean, Murray Bochkin is in it. Um, this dude named Carl Hess is in it, who used to be a Republican speech writer or something like that. Then he became full on anarchist, which actually really was just libertarianism. Right, right. Um, but you also have folks on there. I mean, it, like I said, multifaceted. Has some people that used to roll with... Um, Wrote with Emma Goldman. I remember this is 1980, so a lot of them were still alive. One of our um, friends knew that person. Yeah, um, Stermer, I think her name was. Yeah. Um, there was also what's their names? Um, oh yeah, the DK, Dead Kennedys. They was in it, and then there was just some random. Oh yeah, they did show the Libertarian Party and Harry Brown um, from back then in 1980, which was weird. If you guys know about the Libertarian candidates of 1980, <laughs> Harry Brown. <laughs> Was the vice was the um was the presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party? Jared um, Taylor or Jared Brown? Jared no, 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 <laughs> Harry <laughs> Brown. I believe that's Harry Brown. He was a regular. Okay. I don't know. But Were they still racist? The president, well, the running mate was David Cook. Uh, oh, yes, weird. yes, I remember yes. reading about that. Well, yes, so, okay. Now, Daryl's <laughs> using old man. Is that the campaign where he oh, minted a coin to himself? Huh? Is that the campaign where he minted a coin for himself? I know, don't think he did that back yes. then. If you look I mean, out there, there is a there is a campaign coin that uh, Coke uh, minted for his campaign with him on uh, you know him on one side and the presidential candidate on the other. Oh, but God. you know what they did? It was really um, interesting too. Because, Not too narcissistic. Um, <laughs> because it wasn't just about. Um, uh, just like political structure or anything like that. There were some people that they had on the show that were with, uh, in the documentary. They, they got into the yippies. I want to throw that in there too. But they also talked about um, people who were just working and doing things and setting up institutions and establishments um, like, you know, independent truckers or or some other, some sort of collective that wasn't necessarily political, but it still had anarchist roots to it. So right. it was really important for me because this was I saw this in 96 when I was protesting the Democratic Convention. And during the Democratic Convention, they had this like little unconvention thing happening, which meant also a film festival. This was the film I ran into, and it helped me to understand exactly what direction I was going into. By the time 96 was over, I was pretty much full on radicalized like a mafia because of <laughs> DVD. It's on my shelf right now. And I'll have uh, to watch it. Oh, you we gotta watch it. We gotta I don't even know. I didn't even know I was doing anarchism until everyone said it was anarchism. I thought it was like socialism kind of in a way. Like I don't know because it was like yeah, the state yeah. people. So you know? nasty, yeah the socialists take over um have a nasty habit of doing <laughs> right. um but they do elect uh, mayors though. That, yeah, but they can do things politically pretty easily. But when it comes to actually um, get um, producing results and getting things done, I don't diss socialism at all. I don't diss socialists at all. But when you really want to put your pedal to the metal, you got to be an anarchist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. They like they have hey. too many meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask Rod and Lauren. I know you've got Trump in the film. I think you have Biden. Who are some oh, other yeah. notable people in in the film? Uh, so <laughs> Buttigieg was just all over the place. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. I, I'll, I'll I'll tell you that much. Um, oh. I, I I could not get away from this dude. He's and, not going uh, away. He's not going away. He's not, We're stuck he's with not. Buttigieg for like the next thirty years. That guy is not going away. And he might, he he, uh, we know that he did. Uh, a significant amount of uh, training uh, after we was in, in the army or one of the military branches and became uh, uh, this uh, CIA puppet. Uh, and it seems to me that um, he may or may not be some kind of a plant. Um, <laughs> like uh, 
in, in order to get a CIA, CIA influence. And one of the, the my favorite interactions with him is that I'm following after him and I say, um, uh, Joe, uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg, uh, you know, which branch of the CIA is uh, more powerful, yours or Donald Trump's? <laughs> and um, uh, just he you likes know, that. Uh, uh, you know, just generally challenging to do to debate, and um, I don't know. Um, you kind of hit on him too. Yeah, no, I well. But Tulsi Gabbard <laughs> not you. Come again. Tulsi oh, yeah. Gabbard loved him. She's in it too. She loved Rod. I got jealous. I had to yeah, make him cut out things. Uh, come on. <laughs> everybody was in it everyone who ran uh, you're, you're not gonna you're not just gonna throw that shit out there and not tell the story. <laughs> you can't just move we can't get past something like that no like, oh, I, just right, just right. weird. I remember what you. no that is not a thing <laughs> i know she did if say she's watching you. god help us all come back to hawaii with me rod come back she, to hawaii that did not happen my wife is uh, extrapolating things out of jealousy here. Uh, she knows she liked Rod a lot. It was I was very jealous. I oh, good grief. also um like also, every candidate every candidate was in it from the you know that was in uh, the all primary. All right, so so you have to understand my my rule of thumb in interacting with any of the candidates is that I'd give them a serious question, and if uh, they could be serious with me, um, then I'd give them the respect that they'd paid to me. If they were incapable of doing that, I'd go full on clown show, um, and we would troll the fucking shit out of them. So, what was um, the ratio of clown show to not clown show? Uh, whew, Bernie was, was nice, pretty heavy on the clowns. I'm gonna have to say, <laughs> Marianne Williamson was nice. Uh, Ma yeah, Marianne was super nice. She was super nice, but I only met her the night that she was dropping out. Um, right. So I didn't get to have a lot of interaction. We, you her. never got to meet Mike Gravel. That's uh, like that the is biggest, true. Like, the I, worst. I felt oh, man, rest in peace. He just passed away. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. We're big uh, fans. We're big fans of the new movie that his people put out, too. So. Yep. Um, so I met uh, Cory Booker. Cory Booker was full on clown show. I uh, kind of uh, I, I asked him about uh, Blue No Matter Who. And he's like, Blue No Matter Who? How dare you, sir? And he nearly got out his white glove. <laughs> like, yeah, it sounds like Corey. Did he even really know what you I meant? Think. Wait, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was confused. Uh, Jeb is a mess. A mess. What? Jeb loves you. Uh, Jeb did love me back in 2016. I did 24 rallies with him uh, in which Ugh. he uh, pulled me up on stage to cite scripture. So that was the other thing. Jeb was nice to me. So I had to play along <laughs> for twenty four rallies. Oh, the other, the other, the other, other Bush. Jeb. The crazy hey, thing Jeb about the Bush again. family. So it wasn't just that he was nice; he was inviting me on stage. He was looking for the you. crazy thing. Rally. The thing that irks the living yeah. daylights of, um, about the Bush family. I mean, it, the crazy thing is that if you take them out of the politics, if you take them out of the <laughs> political scene. They are the nicest people in the freaking world. Have you if, seen if they, if they didn't have a single political opinion, you would trust them with your life. It's weird. But George because they do party. have the political opinions that they have, no, you would not. Dude, but, Je Jeb invited me to meet his mom, and it was like such a mom <laughs> moment. And so I met oh, my yes. goodness. What I'm my saying. mother would have loved Do you have that. a picture with Barbara Bush? Please oh, tell me. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, I do. He yeah. got he got him and Cornell West a hug. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cornell showed up. This is the thing. You cannot even make this shit up, dude. And so, <laughs> so there's so there's Manchester, New Hampshire, and then South Carolina has a similar thing down for their primaries. And there's this there's this uh, a nice little joint where like, with this big pig logo down there. I forget the name <laughs> of the place, but I guess everyone goes there. And I see Cornell, and I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" And I start chatting with him. And I'm like, uh, he's like, what are you doing here? And I said, I went to this Jeb Bush rally and he, you know, he thought that was weird. And I'm like, but there he is. You gotta, you know, like go talk. And so I get Jeb and Cornell to talk and they hug and it was weird. Oh, um, yeah, it is weird. And you brought Cornell West and Jeb Bush together. There's video. There it it yes. happened. <laughs> For it real. Happened. For real. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I hung out with Neil Bush, um, you know, a very you lesser known to... Bush. Oh, Neil yeah, Bush, I'm I forgot. Sorry. About I'm, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh I, I don't want to. Um, there's Joe Apio. Of course, you talked to him. Oh, yeah, Joe Apio's in it. 
He's oh, going to yeah. sue us. It's going to be great. Penn State Gun Girl was in it, according to Auntie Google. Oh, oh yeah. Caitlin Bennett. Caitlin Bennett. Oh, oh that's, that's her name. I, forgot uh, yeah, I mean, that that was like the uh, prelude to suck Trump's cock. So, I mean, so that was at this uh, Manchester uh, rally once again um, in 2019. And yeah, Manchester I, rally was a treasure trove. Oh, yeah, but the, dude, you got to understand, there's like hundreds of Manchester rallies. It's mostly Manchester or Goffstown just on the, on the outskirts. Or then there's uh, some that you, you go up to Concord for. But it's it's mostly just Manchester. Um, and, you know, uh, Trump was uh, playing at the stadium. And I say playing because he's he's doing it like a comedian or a rock star. And people would even say that. Uh, and and honestly, they were having a keg party. In yeah, the it was street. actually pretty fun looking. It's like a keg party. They were straight up having a keg party. You can see uh, I, I open uh, the, the shots of that scene. These guys, pound uh, the Trumpers pounding beer. They're inviting me to have Bud Lights. And I, I shotgun some beers with them. And, you know, that's Wait, they were drinking Bud Lights. That sounds like what a Trumper would drink. Uh, well, 100 percent. I mean, even back in 2016. I went to this uh, this Trump rally in uh, Michigan, um, and it was it was in, in a place where they were you could actually buy Bud Lights like at at the at the Trump uh, at the rally. Like okay. everyone had Bud Lights like in the rally. Bud Light, the official. Yeah, so like a concert, the official beer of Trump's shitty campaign. Yeah, it, it was like it was like a concert, and you don't see that with anyone else. And yeah, they were in a venue where. Uh, the, the, no one really thought he was going to be a thing. And I kept saying to people, <laughs> he's going to be a thing. Stop this man. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, I'm no one. Because, so. you know, a lot of times, I mean, I'm one of those folks that said, look, he was not going to be a thing. Because my attitude was, <laughs> we know better. No, Afterwards, it was kind of like, we don't know better. Nope. You and know now, better. And, we and, and know now, better. Yeah, but they we don't know, know better. better. But now I'm at the point where I'm sitting in, 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 here in 2021 is uh, I know better than to keep those motherfuckers who don't know better. So I, um, I remember the, any further. I, I remember the first time that I went on the record uh, saying that Donald Trump would be president. And it was at a Trump rally in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And you were there. And it was the first time that I met you, mm -hmm. actually. And uh, you were arguing with a group of. I uh, was well, so it was it was basically like, there was a bunch of high school kids that were in opposition to Trump and right. uh, like a handful of people that were true believers, uh, uh, adults uh, with their uh, backward, confounded uh, 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 Trump opinions. And this Lawrenceville rally was at a military base. And so Infowars was there and they were going around uh, cherry picking interviews with high school students. And my objective on that day much like my objective this past Sunday was to ruin interviews. Um, <laughs> and so I, I just, I went hopping around from interview to interview. Um, and I actually started, be, uh, this is the weird thing. I started to become frenemies with the producers at InfoWars. Because <laughs> uh, after you spend a couple, hold on, hold on now. All the things. Don't look at me like that, okay? But hey, like, hey, 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 hey. Just as long as you don't get hit with any kind of penalties that um, Alex Jones is going to get. No, 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 no. <laughs> no it's, it's, we it's have not, our own. It's not like that, but you know what I'm saying. It's like you talk to these, like Joe Biggs. Joe Biggs was one of the <sighs> Capitol riders, and Joe Biggs was at this shit. And, like, after you yell at him, like, and I'd be like, Rrr, like, screaming in their face. Hey, wait, time out, time out. Are you saying Joe Biggs was at the Lawrenceville thing? No, no, Joe Biggs was not at Lawrenceville. I'm, I'm just saying, like, he he's a, he, oh, at that okay. time, he was an InfoWars producer. But I'm right, bringing right. him up because he's well-known, okay? But so he would be at these things, and you ruin his interviews for two hours straight, and afterwards, you know, you're sitting on the curb, uh, your producer's smoking a cigarette. I quit smoking 12 years ago or something. Like, but anyhow, but point being is you're sitting around, and it's like, hey, so you're here again. Uh, like it's just i don't know like you're just so uh see so at the next one I, I don't like it's it's like a weird thing i you know, like, a feeling i, I like, mean like even like samson of super happy fun america like we're like i, I it, it's not like uh, I, I mean at this point they seem really bitter but we're like yeah. hey see you <laughs> at the next one you know who that reminds me of i have that kind of a relationship with this um of uh, with this blogger named Elad out of New York City, you met him. Yeah, so Elad was in this <laughs> thing with Caitlin Bennett. He, 
he was in the middle of interviewing oh, her ass. Yeah, Elad oh. from Barely Informed. That's the name of his. Yeah, yeah. And he was doing this shit in Manchester, and he was in the middle of this interview, and and someone whispers to me, and he's like, "Ask about the poopy pants." Ask about the poopy <laughs> pants. And so I and he's like, "You know, wait, wait, like, uh, so I ask about the poopy pants." And he's like, "Wait, no, wait, wait, what's going on here?" And so we get into a like a larger discussion about um, it's uh, like you pooped in your pants. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Do you want so Caitlin's like, did you want me to poop in my pants? Which is I'm a like, great response. Hey, I gotta like, give her credit for that. Like, I, I don't know. I'm a thin man and I only eat vegan food. I could not determine what you're eating that would oh, make you poop in your pants. Um, and it just it went back and forth like she that. Off- it made it sound like she offered to poop her pants and, 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 and she did. I feel of. like it she was, was really I weird. Feel like they you know, had a I, I just want to I just want to make a point here that I am a fan of the band Brass Against. Yeah! And, um, I don't know if I want to go there this week. <laughs> I love I, I love Sophia. Um, oh, oh, for those who don't oh, know, just go on Twitter. It's okay. Now, I, no, do not cheer that shit. No, what? I, no, I didn't know. I didn't know why you were cheering. Because no, no, it was no, consensual. Oh, my God. No, no, no. no. It was. It was, I mean. It was, but no, 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 no. Come on. It's still, it's fine. Oh, get the fuck it's, out of here. She's about to be investigated herself. Police are looking for her over it. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> you know, she can, I can, I can, I can send her my lawyer's contact info. Yeah, some people don't even know what the hell we're talking about. So now I got to tell everybody. There's this band called Brass Against. They were, um, they play, um, rock songs, but with a brass, um, with a brass band. Yeah, we have something like that in Somerville. Yeah. And they're out of sight. They're out of sight. They do a lot of Rage Against the Machine covers. Um, they do Tool. They're opening up for Tool in a couple of weeks. I oh. cool. um, but um, but now they're being called Rage Against the Latrine. And, oh, <laughs> oh, no. And this is why, for those who don't know, Sophia Uriba, who's their lead singer, beautiful woman, downright beautiful woman, <laughs> um, was getting into the uh, the performance, and somebody in the audience asked her to pee on him. She had to go. I cast the out, Satan. I cast the out. What's the big Brought him up on stage, drop trial, and why the fuck are we talking she about? She hit her out. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, get over yourselves. It's fine. She hit. I am not. I am not sweating. Wow. I'm just trying to keep from saying the worst puns in the world just by accident when I talk about the band. She 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 was uh she was facing like sideways so you couldn't see her private parts. Are we so still it wasn't recording this? Are we recording this? Is I'm not. It was. It's not R. Kelly. Okay, it's fine. Oh, this is live. It seems oh, yeah. like no, 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 I mean, it sucks. That, I mean, for me personally, it sucks as a fan that this is what um, they're going to be known for. On the other hand, fuck it. Yep. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know they existed until I saw this blow up, and I'm like, hey, these a- they're, they're not shaking this. They're not shaking this. This no, is no, this is it. This is biting head off the bats uh, level. This of, is who they are who now. You are now, but it's like so funny because can I, my boy. Can I say something? Yes. But when you're not that good at music, you have to do crazy shit for it. <laughs> but they, they are. are. Dude, they a are. Co- they're a cover band. They're, they're a cover, a cover band, band, and Fuck it's that. mediocre. No, no, no. It's a they cover are band. bad they're as hell. They, they are nice as hell. They you know, nice as hell. They you know nice I wasn't a big fan of Pussy Riot. They're nice as hell, and they're good at playing their instruments, but come on. You know, there's real music. I mean, I'm not really always big on cover bands really all that much, but it's kind of like, are we getting into? Now we're getting into the music segment of the show. Yes, I like this part. <laughs> but I, I I I don't I really don't care for cover bands all that much. But when you get creative with it, then you just I like it because the singer's really I, hot. Yeah. You got the hots for the singer, so you I'm think the band be, is great. Hey, 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 but I, if I, I, I think, yeah, but I'll be honest with you, I'm also a fan of um of uh, Max Sabbath, and Max Sabbath is just basically a cover Richard band Richard. that the, yeah. Have you ever heard of them? Oh yeah. No, no, Brian, have you ever heard of them? I have. And okay. I've heard. Yeah. Those all right. Up- all right. If, if we're doing the music segment, oh, me boy. and me and Lauren are obsessed with Bill McClintock and DJ Cumberbund. You know mashups. What? Mashups. Oh, the mashups. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I just saw one that made me cry. So, so like Donna Summer meets Danzig. 
mother, but it's like, mm, 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 like yeah, mm, but it's mm, like mm, bad mm, girls. Mm, 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 bad. Like, it's well, like how, a, about, it's how about the one when they did um, stand up for your rights mashed up with Rebel Yell? Yes. Yeah! yeah, we love that one. Right now, Christian and Brian are like, what the fuck is going on here? Where did we lose this? Well, I, mean, I, know, I know Rebel Yell. That's I, really, I know these I know these so really words. But, the I just, yeah. but I just saw one that just made me have to turn it off after 30 seconds because I was like too busy laughing but, my but head so, off. But so it's it's Rebel Yell uh, meets, meets Bob Marley. So like. Yeah. Like, you got to see it. It's on YouTube. Up. It's there's a whole it's series. Art. There's a whole series of Led Zeppelin Black Sabbath mashups of Robert yeah, Plant singing to uh, Black Sabbath and, and vice versa. So but try like, now, try right Black right Sabbath. Now. Try Metallica with ABBA. Yep. Oh, I don't think I will. Louis in the news. New Metallica. Metallica. Yes, yes, they did. Yeah. That. Yeah. Post, post that one. pre That's the me. Black Album or post the Black Album. Uh, it's Enter Sandman um, with uh, 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 Drugs. No, it's no. Uh, hip to be a square. Yeah, that's right. Hip to be hip a square. To be a hip to be a Sandman. I'm I one could... of those old fuddy duddies that thinks they haven't done shit good since like 1989. You know, well, I'm yeah, a... I'm there too, but well, that's true. But this is different. <laughs> this is very different. I assure you, you will not it's be upset. Time. The juxtaposition is the art. We have really gotten off topic here. Oh no, no, no! This is what happens. When you yeah. Yeah. And by the way, while up, up, while, while I am on the subject of um creative um cover bands um Joe Biden wrote the Patriot the Act. Huh? <laughs> what? Joe Biden wrote the Patriot Act. That's on the dumpster fire. But I gotta throw in postmodern jukebox. Everybody gotta check out postmodern jukebox. So cross right. me on that one. Cover songs done in like oldie time uh what you yeah. call my sister and brother-in-law went to go see them in Asbury. They were in Asbury uh, like a couple of years ago before the pandemic. My sister went to go see them. She likes them. They were just up in Rawway where um they were just up in Rawway where um just a couple of weeks ago, not too far away from where Nikola Tesla had his um um his shop. His Tesla coils. Yes. Nikola Tesla lit up was responsible for lighting up Rawway, New Jersey. His wireless know? electricity uh powered by the lizard people yeah. and uh, his, his hey. they have his they have his bust at the train station in Rawway. Right. And he right. famously grounded his lab by digging a hole underneath the house or the lab he was doing and digging over to the city sewer system and <laughs> nice. illegally clamped because he was doing such big shit. He needed a massive ground rod. So right. he, and, he dug underneath to the sewer system and clamped onto the sewer system. And, and, using and, his ground and when he died, um, John Trump, which is Donald Trump's uncle, was the one who right. inherited the paperwork there. Right. And mm. we covered that in This is Vermin Supreme because of uh, the conspiracy theory. Yeah. Yep. That John Trump uh, uh, gave that over uh, to uh, a time traveler named John Titor. Um, um, yes, and the computer this, guy. This internet thing, <laughs> which is a precursor. This to is Q. not lies, people. This is actually true. No, no, no this is this is big in the conspiracy stuff it's that, I, that, I, that, that no, I'm it's, into. It's, yeah. This is not a real thing. This is uh, <laughs> no, no, not. I mean, John Trump got the. Um, I'm just saying. Got, well, John, John Trump did actually. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Was, the time traveling thing as well. well. John yeah. Trump, uh, that part is real, that John, yeah. John Trump got the Tesla papers. And you can see uh, Donald Trump talking about it, uh, which is because this became part of the This is Vermin Supreme story in, in the documentary. There's a whole segment about it. And these conspiracy theorists talk about it. And Vermin and I speak with Donald Trump Jr. about time travel, um, <laughs> tying it into all of that. And it, it really hurts my brain to think that uh, somehow... We made this interaction happen. It's just like Cornell West and Jeb Bush. Uh, there's there's no reason on God's green earth that these things should be happening, but somehow it did. I captured it on film, and it's uh, it's a moment that I'm very proud of. You're like the Forrest Gump of political trolling. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <I> <laughs> next door to Rawway, next door to Rawway is a town known as Edison. Oh. And yes, it was named um, after Edison because his lab was. In um was actually probably about a mile and a half from the Broadway train station, so um he uh, the lab I believe that Tesla probably worked at um I thought Tesla yeah, worked at one of yeah Edison. but he was like wasn't Edison kind of an asshole oh. Edison Edison was now Edison was a mobster Edison, Edison was a mobster is now really. regarded as an asshole now yeah. <laughs> Edison has been established to be certified asshole but about certified. 50, 
about 50, 60 years ago, um, um, they needed to change the name of their town because um, uh, it was called Raritan, New Jersey. Edison at one time was called Raritan, New Jersey. The problem with that is that there are three Raritans at this time in the state of New Jersey. And they said, you know what? We have to change the names of two of these towns. So it was a it was a toss up between calling um, the Raritan that we are familiar with here, um, either Edison or Nixon. They oh, were, OK, well, <laughs> and I think it, I don't think the Nixon part had anything to do with Richard Milhouse. I just think it, um, I think it had to do with somebody else. Terrible. But, um, but they went with Edison because I guess they, um, they had the foresight. What about um, Westinghouse? Yeah, speaking what happened to Westinghouse? Well, fuck the West, They're West, still around. Don't they make like uh, sewing machines or like microwaves or they something now? They actually used now? to make cheap TVs. But, but speaking of yeah. this, and, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Donald Trump, the man. So I named Donald Trump the man, the company, and uh, the campaign in my lawsuit. And the thing that he asserted was the, uh, the Nixon versus Fitzgerald case. Uh, saying that a standing president uh, can't be named in the lawsuit. Now, obviously, the roosters are coming to hatch on that one, um, and everyone's going after him. And some reserve was just dropped her, so I assume they settled. Um, but um, you know, I, I hope he gets fucked by Steve Bannon. I, I, I bringing it back to what we're doing, um, the grand juries that are being held. Um, I, I honestly believe yeah. are a result of my lawsuit against Donald Trump. Yeah, um, well, because like, they basically when said it. So, so, so I should say, after everything that happened in 2016, I, 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 I did the suing of Donald Trump. Uh, the suing of Donald Trump uh, culminated on December 23rd of 2020, um, in which the Trump campaign uh, conceded, uh, and they wrote me a check for twenty thousand uh, dollars. The Manchester police wrote one for fifteen thousand dollars. Uh, shortly after that, uh, let's say it's what a week and a half, uh, so a week, week and a half, January 6th happened a couple of days after that federal agents, uh, came and approached me. Uh, and they specifically they, asked you about the, you no, know, they specific, specifically mentioned, they the specifically lawsuit. bring up the lawsuit. Um, and they're pretty butthurt over, oh, you're, you're making a good amount of money there, buddy. Huh? And, uh, but they accused no. me of a plot to assassinate Donald Trump. And no. they say that the trailer for our film, Dunny. Uh, 2020 the dumpster fire um is the reason and the reason they got uh, under the umbrella of their tw uh january 6 investigations they interviewed this proud boy the proud boy says uh that somehow and he was assassinating there, the president like there's, there's <laughs> some there's something in the trailer there uh which would suggest uh this assassination plot um and this has led to the 10-month investigation uh, which uh, Lauren and I and uh, probably at least a half dozen, if not a dozen, of our associates have been subjected to. Um, I have there been there's been at least five grand juries at the stage. Seventeen um, plus knocks, about uh, twenty knocks. At least seventeen uh, visits by FBI agents that we know. Like I lost count at that point. I think it's probably up around twenty. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, so, so FBI see, visits after. So they, they say when you're lawyered up, they're they're not allowed to talk to you, and right. they keep showing up uh, e even against that. And so mm -hmm. this goes back to uh, Agent Andy Andy Creed, uh, who's a Boston cop deputized as JTTF by FBI. He identifies as the FBI. He but his joint terrorism. He task introduces force. himself as FBI, uh, but he's deputized as. as JTTF Joint Terrorism Task Force. And they have very little oversight and they uh, report to Boston Regional Intelligence Center. Otherwise known as? Brick. And uh, it's extremely hard to find out what they're doing. And so much federal money goes into it, basically giving BPD officers license to do whatever they want. Uh, there's a lot of people in the ACLU and other organizations fighting against the power that Brick has. They are the ones who operate the gang database, where basically if your cousin got caught doing something and you know he's got a friend who's a gang member now you're on the gang database because your cousin is it's the same group it's brick it's brick and they write reports it's, and they lie and they, it's like a gossip column for cops so in in the in those uh, some of those videos that i shared uh in your dms uh daryl uh right. you, you can see that uh this agent in may uh after we're lawyered up uh shows did up. you did you want us to show that 
I put it public. It's public now. Where I mean, okay. it's, All right. it's public. Grand jury's yeah. tomorrow. I'm getting raided in like two days. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta tell. I gotta say, we got three minutes in, and I definitely want to make sure that before we um before we even get out of here, we gotta let people know how to um how to support you. So can you so, speak on that? So we have a change.org petition, which is not really enough. We uh we uh, we applied for a GoFundMe, and they rejected us. We're gonna really? be posting it. Well, Rod, you need to pick your wording better. We'll 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 make another GoFundMe and it'll be better. If Kyle Rittenhouse could do a GoFundMe, how the hell could we get to, to reject it? Yeah, but we're yeah. we're, <laughs> we're about fifteen thousand dollars deep with yeah, lawyers. This has been very so uh, you know, uh, all all those Trump bucks that I won in the lawsuit, you know, they're it's, it's fleeting away. It's it's not entirely gone, but um, you know, uh, they. They have been effective in their mission to uh, uh, stifle our, 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 our First Amendment speech, uh, which is quite honestly uh, what we're doing in making a promotional trailer. Uh, we were making a satirical statement uh, in, in this promo and, um, you know, basically going after Lauren, going after. My, so, so going after my wife because they couldn't get at me. Yeah, and they do that all the time. Yeah, no, that, that's uh, going uh, back. My life. Going back to Martin Luther King, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> telling him to commit suicide uh, because they got dirt on him. I mean, you know, like, and on, you know, listen, we're not in the ballpark. With, I shouldn't have even said that. We're not in the ball. We're not MLK. You know, uh, we're a fucking clown show over here. Uh, but but <laughs> clown Tifa. But but the, the point <laughs> being is the tactics remain the same. Yes, but, um, they're a gang. Um, yes, they are a gang, um, and uh, they are behaving as such. Yeah. And so we we've lawyered up, and uh, we're doing the best we can. There will be some, if if shit is the fan, there will be some kind of forthcoming fundraiser of some sort. Uh, whether I'm around or not, I am. Oh, okay. you'll be around. You'll be around because there's a lot of people here that are saying, "Yo, we will have your back," including us. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the show. <laughs> I appreciate you it. I didn't do, I'm like the nicest person. What the hell? Yeah, why do I always like? Why have I been targeted for most of my life? It doesn't make any sense. Well, we'll, 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 we'll <laughs> stop that for. Uh, for well, at least we'll be able to slow it down a little bit. I can't promise that we'll stop it. But, yeah. yeah. But also, but, um, another way to support is all I ever wanted was for people to see this movie. Yes, and um, all and that really. It's such Definitely a good now people are going to get a chance to see it. Yeah. Um, I've already seen it and I think it's great. I don't know if there's been any more edits since I last saw it about a year ago, but I definitely, now you said, um, because we're closing out now, you said um, it's on, um, it's going to be on this Apple. in theaters on December 7th. Is that still Correct. happening? Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be on Apple TV now on December 15th. That, uh, that, that is the wishy-washy <laughs> date they have given us. And so, um, my, my uh, because we said to them, it is called 2020 is in the title. You do not fucking let it go beyond <laughs> yeah. that. Um, <laughs> it, they've been wishy washy on this thing about the trailer, and so I don't know what that's about. But I, I so I, I have this other suspicion they're trying to do a Christmas thing. Um, we had a great Christmas trailer, which, you know. If if that's a thing, fine, because I, I guess that's a bigger deal. Uh, we're in content. Uh, we're contenders for the like. Uh, it's been submitted to the Ampas, the uh, American Society of. Uh, what, it's, it's the Oscars. What, what, I, yeah, I, the Oscars. It's been accepted to maybe be looked at by the people who decide who gets nominated for the Oscars. Which means some old dudes have to watch it. I <laughs> like. I'm not delusional enough to believe that it's not. It's, it's not never say thing. never. You're talking you to somebody man? who was technically an Oscar winner. So uh, right, sure. yeah, <laughs> that's you know your name's on there. They're gonna remember you. My yeah, help. I mean, I got my IMD. Well, it doesn't have Oscar on the IMDb. Wait, but, no. Yeah. So wait, was it nominated? I thought it was just nominated. Or was it, it won. It won? It, won? it won best short because there was yeah. two things. What not the feature, but the short in 2019. Um. That that won the um that won the Oscar. And well, it, damn it! Now I have to fix my tweet because I I said that uh not only is uh Daryl Amon Jenkins uh the producer of Twenty Two Hundred Dumpster Fire uh he's also the Oscar nominated I said Oscar nominated producer of Skin. Well, I got to fix that. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I, I'm 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 one of those folks who you know you just got the credit that kind of thing. But, you know, <laughs> But you're but, in our movie, like yeah, so. I'm like, definitely yeah. in the movie. I'm not wearing this shirt though. But I'm wearing one of my other favorite shirts. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, uh, you're in skin in the sense that you're played. 
Yeah, um, I that's mean, the feature. The that's actor, the feature. that actor is not as handsome as you. Well, he definitely has a lot less body fat than I do. That's for damn sure. <laughs> well, come on. I wonder who uh, Mike Coulter is. Is also in the TV show Evil. Yeah, he's Luke Cage. Yeah, and, and, well, he's not Luke Cage in Evil, but he's playing. But he's Luke Cage in Netflix, and hopefully, if Marvel is is like um, doing the multiverse thing, he'll show up in that again. So, because uh, this, because it didn't, because I, I really want to see where Luke Cage ends up. They should have continued that story, and I really hope they do. Um, in any case, um, we gotta cut. We gotta cut out. Um, because I gotta go to work tomorrow in the morning. I'm still a working class dude. I don't care yeah. what people say. And it won't be in this office. I gotta do manual labor. So I want to thank everybody for being. I want to thank Rod and Lauren for coming here for the third time. There will be a fourth and a fifth and a sixth as time goes along. Maybe we'll just make it a monthly thing here. At thanks, the- guys. <laughs> well, thanks for having us. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. Congratulations, man. I can't wait to see the movie. We'll, we'll be plastering it all over. Everyone's going to love it. I'm so we'll excited for everybody to see I'm, it. I, you know, I'm actually most excited to, for everyone to try to help keep Lauren out of jail. Like, yeah. I mean, oh, like, everybody, it's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. It's we, not we, fine. We don't about you. We'll keep you but the here. movie is like really important. But yes, uh, yeah, if you can help me stay out of jail, that'd be nice too. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I have to, we have to sit down. Since we had so much discussion about anarchism, I have to sit you down and teach you about the immortal science of Marxism, Leninism. You know that, right? Oh, I mean, you are. You are wearing this, like this, Brian. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, I thought it was just a banana. Oh, it's a banana. It's a banana. Oh, it's the banana. It really the... pisses off the all right, though. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Like, that's what it is. Right? That's, 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 why want my shirt. that's why I want my shirt so bad. I like oh, yeah. We're going to send it to you. Guys, we'll send it to you like tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, we, and we, Brian, we, we, remember, I still am maintaining that Abraham Lincoln was, in fact, a Marxist in the truest sense. Ah, uh, yeah, no, sure. I, I remember that episode, and um, I, yeah, for sure. I'm still gonna maintain that Christian's gonna kick my ass, but uh, <laughs> was it gay? Um, well, I mean, he's the founder of the log cabin Republican, yeah. so I think so, <laughs> also, right? he was gay. very funny. I <laughs> <laughs> like thought he was that was. <laughs> All right, y'all. I want to thank you all for coming out. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. It was a hell of a show. Christian, thank you for being around again. Brian, thank you for being around. Now, as for being around, um, we will not be around next week. It's Thanksgiving, and I'm 350 pounds, so you know what I'll be doing. Um, (laughs) In any case, um, we will be back um, in, uh, I guess... uh, the week after, then Tuesday after, um, uh, two weeks from today, and uh, we're going to um, still don't know what we're going to be doing on the show. We still got to get my boy not for profit on this program. Um, we're going to be working on that, I guess, in the next couple of um days or weeks. I'm gonna hit them up as soon as I can. But um, uh, but aside from that, I want everybody to have a good holiday. It begins, y'all. Um, Thanksgiving starts it, Christmas ends it. Um, or rather, no. Not Christmas, New Year's ends it because we still got Christmas Kwanzaa. Um, this Wally, I think, has already passed. Um, Hanukkah, of course, everybody's gonna have, yeah, Festivus for the rest of years, yeah. And I did say rest of years because you know, I can't say y'all because it doesn't rhyme. Um, in any case, I want to just um let everybody know to um definitely support um Rod and Lauren, um, watch the dumpster fire. It'll be coming out um, soon, December 7th in theaters, hopefully December 15th on Apple TV. It will be on Apple TV. Don't worry. Um, as for me and um, everybody, just be here in two weeks. We're going to have a um, really good time no matter what we have planned. Hopefully um, hopefully that we won't have any um, ridiculous things happening between then and now. Um, because we don't want to miss talking about it. But like I said, y'all have a good holiday. We'll see y'all in two weeks. And as I always like to say, peace!